This week on Electric Scooter Guide, I'm testing a brand new budget electric scooter, the Turboin M10 Pro. This lightweight single motor scooter is a great choice for new riders, but more importantly, when we tested it, it beat every currently available scooter in our entire database on range versus price. First place out of 152 scooters we tested. I'm Paul from Electric Scooter Guide, the channel that tests more electric scooters than anyone else. And this is my full review of the Turboin M10 Pro. I'll cover the specs, what it's like to ride, what I like and don't like about the build quality. We'll talk about all the tested performance numbers and how those numbers stack up against similarly priced scooters, plus who we think should buy it and who we think would be better off with something else. Turboin is well known for their budget-friendly single motor electric scooters. In fact, some of our most popular videos are the cheap scooters series and Turboant has made that list three years in a row and it's also been featured in our best lightweight scooters as well but here's something funny when we first tested the original Turboant M10 two years ago we didn't end up reviewing it at all because frankly we just didn't feel like we could recommend that version of this scooter mainly because it wouldn't make it up our test tail even with a running start but then came the M10 Lite which is a completely different scooter and by all accounts people really like it but this is the M10 Pro and basically Basically what Turboant did here is they took their popular M10 Lite, which is still available for $299, and they gave it more range with a 57% bigger battery and 25% more top speed. And you get all that for about 30% more dollars. This new upgraded version, the M10 Pro, is on sale right now for $389, and we've got a coupon code and a link to the lowest price down in this video's description. A lot of riders are going to love this scooter, but there are some things you should know before buying an M10 Pro, and I'm going to cover all of them. What's in the box? All right, we've got the manual the charger, a fender, and some tools and fasteners, and my favorite type of valve stem adapter that makes it easy to air up the tires. The 2 amp charger gives the M10 Pro 33% faster charging than we typically expect at this price point. It'll charge your battery from empty to full in just over five hours. It's a beautiful day in Golden Gate Park. Let's go see what it's like to ride. The M10 Pro is an entry level scooter that anybody can ride and I think a much nicer looking design than the original M10. It has a single 350 watt motor in the front wheel and fairly mellow acceleration controlled by a thumb throttle right over here at the right grip. Now for safety, they've made it kick to start only. So you do have to kick off to get it moving, but it makes it easier that you can just hold the throttle down ahead of time and just kick. Where with some scooters, they'll just ignore you if you put the throttle down first and then kick second. And trust me, it's this is a little detail, but this is better and it definitely matters. Now, once you're moving, if you hold the throttle steady for 10 seconds, cruise control will kick in and you'll hear two little beeps and then it'll hold your speed steady. All right, so there's our beeps and it's holding steady. And then, uh, you know, now if you wanna exit cruise control, you just touch the throttle again or touch the brake and it'll drop out. Now, this is a nice feature because it lets you rest your thumb on long rides, but unfortunately, it's not possible to completely disable it if you don't ever want it to kick in. I've read the manual twice and I've tried every combination of button pushes and you just can't really defeat it completely. So there are two buttons on the dashboard. Uh, the lower one is a power button, a long press uh, turns the scooter completely off, and a short press turns the headlight on or off, like right there, and it gives a nice little beep. And then the upper button's sole function is to switch between the two modes, and there are just two of them. Uh, the lower mode goes uh, 12 miles per hour, which is what we're doing right now. And then uh, a little poke and we'll go into the upper mode and then that will take us up to 20 miles an hour. And you know, you can switch those while you're riding. When we checked the data, the tested top speed was a little lower than 20 miles per hour. And you'll see the exact number when we get to the performance section. The M10 Pro has a really nice looking display that's easy to see in sunlight. And I also really like the unusual battery gauge that's shaped like four sets of parentheses. There are four bars, but they actually indicate five levels of charge because the innermost set turns red during the last couple of miles before the scooter shuts off. There's no app for this scooter or any Turboant scooter for that matter, but it does have one feature I really didn't expect at this price point, And that's a USB charger port right here at the back of the dash. And this is handy because you know there's room in the handlebars right here for a phone mount if you want to use your phone for navigation and that way you can keep charging while you ride. These grips are extra large and they feel really good and they're softer than other grips that I've seen that look like these. Near the left grip is my favorite kind of bell because it sounds nice and they never seem to break. If you can drop this thing as much as you like and it's never going to break off. Next to that is a single lever that controls the brakes at both wheels. It has a regen brake at the front, which charges your battery as you slow down, and a single disc brake at the rear wheel. And of course, it also activates the brake lights, which are easy to see from behind or the sides. One of the benefits from having only a regen brake up front is it's impossible to lock the front tire. So you don't have to worry about putting yourself over the handlebars if you overdo it. 
The M10 Pro's brakes are a big upgrade from the original M10, which had no front brake at all. In fact, this tested stopping distance from 15 miles per hour was more than a foot shorter with the new M10 Pro than the original. But stopping distance is still, you know, typical for scooters of this price class. The headlight is located up high and it's external to the stem. So the downside is that it can get bumped uh, when you're moving this thing around in the car. But the upside is, is it's easy to adjust and being high, it sends the light further down the road. If you want to ride in the rain, the M10 Pro has an IP54 water resistance rating, which is really kind of the minimum you want if for wet weather riding. But, uh, you know, keep it to light rain. I wouldn't take it out in a downpour. There's no suspension on the M10 Pro, which is, you know, typical at this price point, but the ride quality from the aluminum alloy frame and eight and a half inch air-filled tires feels solid and rattle-free, but, you know, not as smooth as the Turbo X7 Max with its 10 inch tires. The stem latch feels really solid, and it's a similar design to the one on the 9V Max. And it also has a little keeper right here, so it doesn't come undone accidentally. The stem to deck latch is also similar to the 9V Max because it latches the handlebars down off to one side. So the benefit of that is that it means this side doesn't stick out as much, so when you're carrying it, it doesn't get snagged on things. I love the super modern look of this like rubber patterned deck. Uh, you know, the deck, if you measure it from here to here, it's a bit on the short side, it's 16 inches. But for some reason, I didn't really notice that while I'm riding. You know, usually less than 20 inches, I feel a little crowded, but it just didn't feel crowded on the M10 Pro. <laughs> well, that was fun. Let's go check out performance. The M10 Pro easily hits the specified 20 mile per hour top speed on the speedometer, but as is typical of most scooters, the speedometer reads a little high. According to our ProGrade data logger, the official top speed on flat ground with a freshly charged battery is 18.9 miles per hour. That's a great top speed for riding around town because it's fast enough to pass bicyclists without it feeling awkward or like you're never gonna be able to finish the pass. Its top speed was slightly faster than the 18.6 miles per hour we tested for the Turbo Ant X7 Max and right in between the GoTrax G3 Plus and G4. Now for the thing it does best. The M10 Pro has a big battery for the price, so I expected great things, but went even further than I expected on our hilly range test course. I covered 18.2 miles riding in the fastest mode. Claimed range in mode one is up to 30 miles, but our range test is tough, so we typically get 50 to 60% of the specified range. But comparing the tested numbers to the same tests for other scooters, the M10 Pro beat every available scooter we've ever tested when it comes to range per dollar. Now we haven't tested the M10 Lite, but with its 6.6 .6 amp hour battery and same performance specs as the M10 Pro, we calculate that the Lite should cover about 11.6 real world miles. When it comes to acceleration, the M10 Pro is fairly laid back. If you're looking for an adrenaline rush, you're not gonna find it in the throttle, though handling is amazing, so things can get a little spicy around corners if you want to. In a straight line, the M10 Pro takes 7.8 seconds to reach 15 miles per hour, but moves along quickly once it gets up to speed. The plus side of the laid back throttle is that it makes the M10 Pro very smooth and easy to ride. Hill climbing is about what we'd expect from a 350 watt scooter. The claimed hill climbing capability is a 15% grade, but I found our 10% grade test hill was about the limit at my rater weight of 165 pounds. When it comes to what the scooter is like to live with, the M10 Pro scores high for portability and for just being good transportation in general. It's trunk friendly dimensions plus lightweight at about 36 pounds means that you can take it just about anywhere, even if your commute includes a few flights of stairs or public transportation. Recently, we've started scoring all of the scooters we test on 11 factors which impact their reliability and longevity. And the M10 Pro scores 7.1 out of 10, which is fairly typical at this price point. The score is pulled upward by good parts availability on their website and very reasonable parts pricing, but downward by a lack of UL listing and a one-year warranty that only covers the battery and motor controller for six months. So what do I think about the Turboan M10 Pro? Well, this third generation of Turboan's M10 series is definitely the best M10 yet, and I think the best value in the Turboan lineup. And this is coming from a brand that's kind of known for being all about value in the first place. If you're an adrenaline junkie, the M10 Pro might not be your thing, because this is an easy to ride electric scooter for new riders on a budget, or for anybody who wants an inexpensive commuter with very long range and a smooth throttle response. If the M10 Pro sounds like your thing, check out the video's description for a link to the best price plus a coupon code. I'm Paul from Electric Scooter Guide. Ride safe and don't forget to wear your helmet.